Welcome to the Zaleski Sports Show. I'm your host, Rachel Zaleski, and today we're going to be talking about high school sports, the NBA playoffs, and the Marshfield Police Department because they're coming to take Jason away. Ah, just kidding. Uh, Two weeks off, that's what I'll do to you. My brain's not working 100%. That's okay. Uh, I'm still at the beach. So joining us today is Jason, our sports expert. Jason, nice to see you here. Howdy do. Um, So we've had 10 full days of high school baseball and softball without any snow. I think so. Isn't that wonderful? I, I, this is the first thing I check, though, when we go outside. Is I check to see if there's any snow, either on the ground or in the forecast. And, I, you know, we, we were snake bit in April. We were pounded by snow, 30 inches of snow in the month of April. But you're right, Rachel, we've had a full now 10 days of mm-hmm. softball, baseball, uh, soccer, all the outdoor sports. There have been a couple of golf meets, and uh, things are happening. Uh, things have been clicking. Uh, we visited a couple uh, just this past week. Uh, we saw uh, Columbus Catholic softball, and they took on Loyal. And then we saw the Spencer Rockets take on the Greenwood Indians. And so, Rachel, how about a couple quick highlights? Sure. New bars. Welcome to the Zaleski Sports Show Highlight House. In this contest between the Dons and the Greyhounds, we saw 37 runs scored in a very exciting game. Here's Jason with the highlights. Thank you, Rachel. Marshfield Fairgrounds Park was the scene, and home plate was attacked often during this game. Top second, Loyal already up 2-0, and Rhiannon Rayhorn steps up and delivers a two-RBI double. Next batter, next pitch, and next Greyhound run. Then it's Emily Hildebrandt, two-RBI double. Greyhounds eventually leave the second up 8-0. Bottom two, Don's on the rebound, score two, and then it's Annie Byroll with a two RBI single off the wall in center field. Loyal up 8-5 after two complete. Top third, Greyhound Bunt is laid down and the Don's infield is slow on the rotation to first base. Ball goes up the right field line. Coach Troy Zimmerman comes in to get the team settled down. Two batters later, it's Haley Reith with a two RBI single. And the Greyhounds score four in the third. Don's half of the third, two outs with runners on second and third. Brooke Nieder scores Marin Seafluth. Don stay within striking distance. Bottom four, two down. Seafluth gets one by the diving second baseman. A two out, two RBI double makes it 12 11 loyal. Bottom five, Nieder drives in another one. Don's down 17 15. Addie Byroll struggled from the plate early and then breaks through with a smash up the middle. Another run scores. Then it's Ella Schultz with the game tying RBI. And we're at 17 all. Both teams play one in the sixth. In the eighth, with two outs, Don's looking to stop the Greyhounds, and Rayhorn looking for the go-ahead RBI, sends it back up the middle. Addie Byroll gets the swinging strikeout, and to the bottom of the eighth we go. Bottom of the eighth, Don's unable to get a base runner down to their final strike. Swing and a miss. Greyhounds hold off the Dons 19 to 18. Welcome to the Zaleski Sports Show Highlight House, brought to you by Nasonville Dairy, Sport and Spine Clinic of Auburdale and Marshfield, and V&H Auto. 75 degrees and sunny in Spencer today as the Rockets hosted the Greenwood Indians. Top of the first in Greenwood's Kaylee Learman gets the Indians going with a single. 
Then on the overthrow, advances to second base. Next batter, Lexi Ostrike, drops the ball in shallow right. And Learman comes all the way around from second to score. Bottom first, and Sadie Mercer gets the rocket started. Rockets pitcher Tiffany Minders lays down a successful bunt, and runners are at the corners. Next batter, Lexi Bear, liked the look of the Minders bunt, and the squeeze play is on. We're tied at one. Top third and still tied at one. Ostrike again making contact. Learman moves to third. Next Minders pitch comes in. Bear fires down to third. Ball gets by the third baseman. And Learman comes in to score. Indians up 2-1. Rockets get two across in the third, bringing a 3-2 lead in the bottom of the fourth with two outs, runner on second and third. Bear lifts a fly to left field. And the ball is dropped. Both runners come across. Next up, Chloe Drews sends it right back to left field. Caught this time, but the damage is done. Indians down 5-2. to two. Top six, and Maddie Race rips the ball to the fence in left center. Abby Kirchner on her horse scores all the way from first base. Top seven, Rockets up 7-3, and leadoff hitter Amanda Bogdanovich reaches. Learman grounds out to Minders for out number one. O-strike to Mercer at short. And a laser throw to first for the second out. Then Minders takes matters into her own hands, strikes out Taylor Gregorich to end the game. Let's go down to Rockets head coach, Lachelle Canfield. Coach, let's just start. 7-3, thoughts on the game? Um, I thought the game was awesome. I love seeing a lot of small ball happening. So it was, it was a really fun game, beautiful day. <laughs> we'll bring in our Zaleski Sports Show Highlight House Player of the Game, uh, Sadie Mercer. Sadie, you, you heard me talk to Coach a little bit. Uh, three for four today. Just talk about uh, your performance uh, from the plate. Oh, gosh. I don't know. It was just the energy that the whole team gave me and just, like, we were all hyped up. I wanted it. We all wanted it. I wanted to go out there because earlier we've been starting off really late with our bats in the later innings, so I wanted to get us started right away. Welcome to the Zaleski Sports Show Highlight House, brought to you by Nasonville Dairy, Sport and Spine Clinic of Marshfield and Auburndale, and v &H Auto. Jack Hackman Field in Marshfield, Columbus Dons hosting the Colby Hornets. Hornets threatening in the top of the first until Bryce Furlinger strikes out Brandon Kilty and Noah Robita to end the inning. Bottom of the first, Dons at bat. Eden Jacobson stealing third. Ball is overthrown and Jacobson who already stole second comes around to score. Evan Daringer connects past the second baseman and it's Furlinger who earlier reached on a fielder's choice crosses the plate. Next batter Noah Taylor infield single in an RBI. Dylan Geiger strikes out the final batter, but not before the Dons go up 3-0. Bottom second and more action for the Dons. Ethan Meese walked to start the inning, and then Jacobson rips one to the outfield, and the Dons have runners at the corners. Calvin Brown with a useful RBI there. Then later in the second, it's Furlinger with a sacrifice fly to center. That scores Jacobson. Don's up 5-0. Interesting play to end the inning. Geiger on the pickoff attempt, throws wide and into center field. Nick Mulliver hustles over to third, and he's sent towards home. The throw comes on, and he's tagged by Hornet catcher Alex Schmidt for the final out. Top seventh now, a last call for the Hornets. Two outs. Schmidt on second, Ross Elmhorst on first. Harley Schmelzer comes to the plate and launches the ball to deep right, rolls all the way to the fence. 
Schmidt scores, and it's a two-out RBI for Schmelzer. Next batter and Dons with two outs on the scoreboard, looking to wrap things up, get Kelty to ground out, and the 4-3 put out ends it. Dons over the Hornets, 5-1. Thank you to our sponsors, Nasonville Dairy, Sport and Spine Clinic of Marshfield and Auburndale, and v &H Auto. You are watching the Zaleski Sports Show. Highlight House! I'm in the house. I'm in the house. <laughs> Moving on to the NBA, Jason. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and tell us a little bit more about this LeBron James fella. Well, I've seen a lot of basketball in my 42 years, and I've never quite seen anything like I saw in the past four games when the Cavaliers and the Raptors uh, tangled. Uh, the Battle of Lake Erie, Cleveland on the south side, the mistake by the lake, and then you've got Toronto on the other side, and I don't even know what they call that place. It's Canada. <laughs> uh, but um, The number one seed, Toronto Raptors, uh, went up against the Cleveland Cavaliers, uh, number four seed, and LeBron James single-handedly swept the Toronto Raptors. It, it was unbelievable. Uh, he had a, a buzzer beater in Game 3 to win it. It was tied at 105. He just says... Hey, that's all right. I'm just going to dribble left, shot right. Uh, just an amazing shot uh, on Sunday night. I'm sorry, on Monday night, Rachel. Uh, he was fading away. They were they were up by 20. He was just having fun. Um, he he shot a fadeaway from the baseline over the backboard, falling into the bench. Uh, nothing but net. I mean, the guy is amazing. It's unbelievable. He really did. He single-handedly swept the Toronto Raptors. Now we don't normally talk about the NBA in the show because it's just not that good. <laughs> this though, this this guy, yeah, he's good. He's good. So of all the hundreds of players out there, you found one that you could talk about. It's the only one I even know. I, I don't even know these these players anymore. The Bucks are done. Uh, Fear the deer. Well, they they got feared right out of the NBA playoffs, and uh, so now we've got this uh, coming up. So now the uh, Cavaliers get a long uh, a long break. They await the winner uh, of the other series, and they'll play somebody later, and then the finals will come up later, and. Maybe we'll tell somebody here in a few weeks who won the NBA championship in 2018. Right. So there's that. So, uh, Rachel, you mentioned the uh, Marshfield Police Department is here, and uh, we're going to talk to them uh, right after this. Welcome to the Zaleski Sports Show Highlight House and our special presentation of the 5th Annual Marshfield Special Olympics versus the Marshfield Police Department. The Olympians came into the game winning their first four and looked to push their streak to five, Prior to the game, many said the PD would need to get off to a quick start and put themselves in a winning position. Starting lineups are done and the ball is live. Tip is up and the PD with a chance for a quick start? Eh, no. Only three back on defense and an easy bucket made this time. PD on the board. Nice passing here leads to an open shot. And it doesn't lead to points. Rebounded there nicely. Interesting moment in the game here as we see a loose ball foul. And then not sure what was said and it leads to an ejection. The PD in a hole early and then lose a starter. Critical to keep your cool and stay in the game. Ensuing inbound by the Olympians and tough play under the basket. Leads to two points. Olympians again outworking the PD down low. Last moments of the first half. And the PD rings the bell from three. And then here, rebound, outlet, fast break opportunity. That's cashed in. And we've got ourselves a two point game at halftime. Second half now, and he don't dance. He got money moves. Olympians catch the PD napping and open up a big 51-43 lead. In the kitchen, wrist twisting like a stir fry. Woo! Another rebound, more down low points. Late surge by the PD, not enough as the Olympians take their fifth straight, 56-53. Um, I think it's just that uh, we practice really hard. We all have something that we're special at. Um, my particular favorite is uh, the defense. 
I love being a defensive player, um, but at the same time, if I've got an opening for a basketball shot, I'll take it. And what was it like playing against the police department? Um, it's it's always very fun. Um, I always enjoy it. Like I mentioned, it's the one time my mom can watch me play, uh, and it's a big event. I love the dancing and just I, I know if it, yeah, so it's everything, and I love it. Thank you for watching this special presentation of Marshfield Special Olympics versus the Marshfield Police Department. You are watching the Zaleski Sports Show Highlight House. I'm in the house. All right, and we're back, and we are joined by Jamie Kaiser, Josh Fallen. Guys, thanks for being here. Uh, we just got done watching uh, the highlight of the game. So Feel free to take him away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, is this the point where I do that? <laughs> yeah, it might yeah. be. Yeah, it might be. <laughs> Um, so, uh, winners first. Uh, we'll just start with Josh and just uh, just thoughts on the game. I, I mean, obviously you had fun and all that, but uh, just talk about the actual game and, and how you uh, how you performed during the game. Uh, we played really well, and we moved the ball around, but I couldn't hit nothing. Oh, so <laughs> Jamie was lucky I couldn't hit nothing <laughs> no, or the team yeah. and all that. But we enjoyed it. Like we really didn't break that much that because we didn't win, but we had we all had a lot of fun. Yeah. Now, what I saw during the game uh, from from your team's end, uh, a lot of points down low, a lot of scoring down low. Uh, was that the the strategy coming in? Not really. Okay. But we moved the ball around and got it to our big guys, and they helped us out quite a bit, make points. Yeah, and that's that's the key to it. So 56-53, Jamie. Close game. Um, your your guys hit a couple threes towards the end, uh, got it a little bit closer, but. Not enough. Yeah, I actually th don't think it was actually that close. I think it was 56-51. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, at yeah, any not rate, not to correct though. you on your own show. But. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, PD made shots though coming on the end. Yeah. Uh, had a chance, but just a little too little, too late. It looked like. Yeah, we kept it interesting. Yep, and that was the important thing. Yeah. I think it made it more exciting. Right? Yeah, it did. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so it, uh, Jamie, just uh, you, you know, talk about the game. Uh, you were in it. Uh, had other uh, your other guys that were in there, uh, and, and other uh, from the PD. Just talk about what it looked like from on the court. Uh, tiring. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, like I said in the previous one, these guys play all the time, so they're already conditioned for it. And and we play the game once a year, and we don't practice or anything in between either. So uh, we're, we're coming in green, and, mm -hmm. and it shows. Um, mm -hmm. But we caught our stride a couple times during the game, and I think we scared them. Um, but ultimately, you know, we can't compete with them because they, they can rotate players and, and bring in fresh bodies. So we're kind of at a disadvantage the, the way that goes. And, and we've got a couple of older guys on our team, myself <laughs> included. Uh -huh, yeah. We get winded. Hey, what can you, what can you do? Yeah. yeah, and it's, yeah. Uh, at the end of the highlight, uh, we talked to, uh, talked to one of the coaches and we talked to our, our uh, highlight house player of the game. Uh, let's just go ahead and just talk about them. Just mention their names and then uh, what they, how they contribute to the uh, to the program. Uh, the the coaches? Yeah. Um, well, the the head coach David Merko. I got my yep. cheat, cheat, cheat sheet in front of me here. Yeah. Um, their head coach. Uh, I don't know much about him. You want to talk about David? Sure. Anything well, you can talk about on camera? That. <laughs> well, he's a really good coach, and mm -hmm. he knows to rotate his players, and he knows where to put his players exactly where he can put them. Sure. Now I know that there were a couple teams that combined uh, for the event. Uh, our player of the game turned out to be Heather Holland. Uh, have you played with Heather before? Yeah, she's a really good defensive player. She can move and like when she gets open, she'll hit her shots like pretty much most of the time. And she's really great at defense and she knows how, she knows how to move quite a bit too. Yeah, and gave a really good post game interview too. It turns out. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> she was. Uh, she she did a good job there. So, um, all right, uh, Rachel. Any? I mean, you saw. Uh, parts of the game and, and then the highlights. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't be there in person. Uh, what did you see? Um, I saw somebody got ejected from the game. Oh, well, <laughs> we weren't going to bring that up. Uh, oh, oh, but oh. you, well, listen, I mean, it's, uh, it, it's an important game. Um, emotions get ramped up. It's yeah. important, though, uh, that you keep one of your top players, and that's debatable, but you keep one of your top players in the game, and yet uh, there he goes mouthing off. And before you know it, Jamie, he's out of the game. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, I'm not going to mention any names, Bob Larson, but um, <laughs> yeah, you know, he, he had some trouble following the rules, I guess. Yeah. And before we knew it, uh, he was getting literally hauled off the floor yeah. by a couple of uniformed officers. Hmm. And it, it's, it's pretty bad when it comes to that. Uh, they were nice enough to let him back in later in the game. They did, okay. Um, okay. But yeah, he, he, he got punished for that one. Yeah, okay. well, you got to keep your cool, you know. In a, in yeah. a big game like that, uh, emotions do get, get going, the juices get flowing. You got to be able to keep your cool on the basketball court. I think Absolutely. we all know that. 
Absolutely. And yeah, uh, yeah these, these guys are full of energy on their team, and mm -hmm. we just couldn't keep up with them, though. Yeah. yeah. Rachel, what else you see? It's a lot of fun. A lot yeah, of fun. Up and like down, it. back and forth. Great mm -hmm. shots. I thought it was. Uh, mm -hmm. it looked like a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I thought so too, and and you know I didn't keep track of the shot percentage, but both teams. I mean, a, a lot of shots were falling, and that makes uh, for an exciting game too. Yeah, they were. I just I think they just put up more than we did. Yep. Yeah, they sure. threw the ball up more. Yep, that's yeah. Yeah, that's what I saw. Now uh, this game, uh, although it is a game, uh, there are some other reasons uh, that the game is held. And so, Jamie, I know you came on the show. You want to talk about uh, some of those other things now that happened after the game, or will happen now uh, yeah, in yeah. the in the time being. Absolutely. As always, anytime we do an event like this, it, it's for the cause. It's to bring awareness to, to the Special Olympics and the athletes because they deserve it. Uh, and I just want to throw out some numbers here Please. Uh, that represents the, the awesome community that we have. Um, last year, we, we profited, or I shouldn't say profit because it all goes directly yeah. back into yeah. the Fundraised. program. Fundraised. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. um, just around $5,400. Uh, this year we uh, eclipsed seventy-seven hundred dollars. Wow! So wow! wow. Yeah. That's quite yeah. quite an increase from last year. Very generous community. We had uh, two hundred and sixty plus people show up and watch the game, yeah. which is about average for us. Mm -hmm. um, so I can't, you know, anybody who's watching this right now, I, I can't stress enough how how much we appreciate that uh, the support from the community. And I speak directly to anybody that's watching this. So you mm -hmm. know, keep it up. You're doing great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we appreciate it, and the athletes deserve it. So thank you. Yeah, uh, we'll go back to Josh now because Jamie just said something about keeping it up. What do they need to change? They're talking about the PD mm -hmm. now for next year, and what do they? You know, how, how can they keep up? How they, can they keep up? Well, <laughs> they got to practice more. That's all I can do. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. like scheduled days on the work calendar yeah, to practice much. Yeah, right basketball. On the, right on the calendar. Say, so, oh yeah, we got to practice this day, but all right. They they the cops they don't want to move. They they're really great players, but. Mm -hmm. I guess when I came down to the last minute, we just showed who was better. Yeah, oh, yeah absolutely. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, and, I, and my advice now this time of year, uh, Jamie, and, the, and to the rest of the PD, uh, now that the snow is cleared, I mean, there are basketball hoops everywhere. There's hundreds of them around the city. Go find one and, may, and, and practice your shots. You just might do that, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Good. All right. Well, good. Well, a lot of fun. We're going to keep you here because Rachel's got Sports 101, and we'll see. Uh, these guys probably know a thing or two about this. That's right. Let oh. her rip. Can right. I make an announcement real quick? Yeah, please. please. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, so this year, uh, we decided we're going to do a, a softball game fundraiser as well. Oh, cool. Um, and that's going to be slated for July 29th. It's a Sunday of Hub City weekend, Hub City Days weekend. Um, game time right now is, is subject to change, but we're shooting for 1 p.m., uh, weather permitting. So, okay. Uh, Same two organizations. Uh, it, yeah, it'll yeah. be it'll mm -hmm. be the the cops against the the athletes. Yeah. Cool. I, I, as you can see, I'm making notes right now. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I mean, that's gonna be fun. Yeah. Yeah, I'm we're gonna, looking I'm forward gonna... to it. Uh, we've never done anything like that before for the Special Olympics cause. Um, so we're looking forward to it, and hopefully everything goes smoothly and yeah. get a good turnout cool. for that. Yeah. All right. Well, it's on the calendar. I am not out of town that day, so uh, so I'll be there. We'll see if we can bring Rachel down right. there too. Right. Uh, if there's gonna be any uh, uh, nachos, uh, Rachel's a big fan of nachos okay. with cheese pretzel. or pretzel with cheese. Yep. So otherwise, you may have to bring your own. We'll see what we can okay. do. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Star power. What are you gonna do with the uh, you know elites yeah. like this? So all right. Sports 101, Rachel. Tell them what we got. All right. So um, we've seen a few instances this year so far in softball about the rundown. Mm -hmm. um, so it doesn't look like there's been much that's been practiced about the rundown so far. So tell us a little bit more about what is a rundown. Well, as I mentioned a little bit earlier in the show, Rachel, let me make sure I'm here. Okay. So what we talk, what we've talked about a lot is the snow. And what that meant is there haven't been a lot of time to practice scenarios. And baseball and softball, I mean, all sports, you practice scenarios. But baseball and softball, there are so many that most of the practice time is based around scenarios. That's a hint, PD. So when, when the game takes place then, if you practice that scenario, you know what to do. Well, the rundown is one of those. And so every now and then, a runner will get caught in between the bases. Uh, what we've seen this year is a couple times with the runner on third, that runner on first is leaving, and I think intentionally to get caught in a rundown. Mm -hmm. um, and they are taking their time getting back uh, between first and second base and allowing that, that run home to score. So. Uh, it's it's a rotation, and I didn't bring the whiteboard with today, but it, essentially it's a rotation that the defense provides um, that while the ball is being thrown back and forth, uh, uh, the reinforcements are coming to line up behind first and second base, so that way they can, they can rotate through those uh, throws uh, and get that person um, kind of just hemmed in, get them in a, in a real pickle. 
Um, but you've got to keep an eye on home. And right now, because the offense is a little bit ahead of the defense, they're allowing that run from third to score while they're too busy uh, with that runner from uh, first and second. So mm-hmm. ideally there, you've got to cut down the run and uh, let it rip from there. That maybe wasn't my best explanation ever, but it's all about scenarios. And if we go back to the wide shot here, and, and again, these guys, um, you know, maybe in, in basketball practice, you've talked about that before, right? You've got so many seconds left on the clock. Uh, here's what to do, or on an inbound play, right? Here's here's an inbound play in this kind of scenario, and here's what you do. So, scenarios as far as practice uh, are very important to, to run through. So, did you go through those in your practices? Oh yeah. You know, some of those things, right? I mean, you got to be prepared. Yep, you got to yep. be prepared. Yeah. Yeah. I would think speed is important too. Well, speed and efficiency. I mean, the ball travels much faster than the runner, so it's just a matter of. Uh, closing that distance as those defenders rotate in and getting that runner in a box and just being able to tag that runner out. But you got to keep an eye on that runner at home, for sure. So you guys can practice that. Yeah, maybe uh, we'll see a little bit of that on July 29th. Maybe. There you go. <laughs> Excellent. You never go. All right, Sports 101. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much to Josh and to Jamie for coming on the show today with uh, Police Department Special Olympics. Um, and uh, thank you, everyone, for watching. This has been the Zaleski Sports Show. I'm your host, Rachel Zaleski, and this is our sports expert, Jason Zaleski. Um, if you want to catch us on Facebook, you can type in Zaleski Sports Show. Otherwise, you can find us on Twitter at Zaleski Sports. Thanks, everyone, and have a wonderful rest of your week. Go sports! Gold all in my ring. <laughs> Lock me up now. Lock Jason up now. <laughs> just, just wake me up when you're ready. I'll be up here. He will, because he does. He sits up straight when he starts talking. Well, <laughs> as we do the wide shot, I'll say, ah, ha, 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 ha. Just kidding. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs>